Let's go. <laughs> Before we get to today's episode though, I want to give a quick shout out to the guys from Car Vertical for helping me pay my bills by sponsoring this video. You guys all know that I only purchase used cars for good price and when it comes to buying used cars, you want to know as much about the car as possible and its history. A seller of the car might tell you that the car has never been an accident and never been repaired but when you look up a car's VIN history, that might not be the case. One, because he's lying or for two, because he just doesn't know. All you gotta do is go to car vertical.com and type in the VIN number of a vehicle you're acquiring. For example, I got here a Toyota Prius. Everything looked okay until I realized coming down here that there was a possible automated rollback. Over here I have another example. It is a Volkswagen Passat and everything looks good up top and the car looks clean in the ad but when you dig deeper into the VIN number you realize that it was at one point salvage. And what's cool about Car Vertical is that it will actually give you a photo of the damage. So thanks again to Car Vertical for sponsoring this video. Long story short, do not buy a used car without looking up its VIN history. Now we're back to the episode. All right guys, so this is actually day two of the rear brake caliper installation job. I got the stock e-brake cable out and mounted the custom linkage system. The e-brake cable right there that gets hooked up to the caliper, goes down and above that black cable there. I still need to mount it with like a zip tie or something. But that cable goes all the way back to where the passenger side cable also comes in, right? That little bracket there you see. And then that gets tied into the actual e-brake from under the car. So now that the calipers are installed in the back, which looks amazing, I'm very happy with it. What you have to do is remove the like a check valve inside of the slave cylinder. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove everything here because it's not kind of dirty and nasty and uh, show you what's going on here. This is the cylinder flipped upside down. So you can imagine the reservoir on the bottom here. I took that off, put it in the vise. And what you wanna do is remove these two large nuts. And what you would see is a check valve, something like this. This on the front side, as you can see, has a little hole in it, right? But when you come to the rear of the valve here, there's no hole in it, which means this does not deliver fluid into the system. With this type of check valve in the rear, you're going to have a uh, continuous pressure built into the system, which is what you want to use for a drum brake setup. However, because we have now gone from drum brake to a disc brake, what you want to do is remove the check valve. You have an OEM slave cylinder. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up and uh, clean the nuts off. I'm going to probably paint that up. It looks like there might have been a potential leak in the past. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that off and uh, repaint it. And at the same time, um, I'm going to show you how to install prop valves. Prop valves aka proportion valves is going to allow you to adjust the pressure distribution front and back of the car so you can do like 60 front 40 rear uh, 70 front 30 rear etc. I did this on my FTR 7 race car. All right guys so after a little bit of sanding polishing painting this is what the brake cylinder looks like. Coming to the vehicle side this is what the booster looks like as good as new in my book. So what I'm gonna have to do now is remove this stock brake proportion valve. Piece right here, the previous owner painted. There is the uh, upper and then the lower, which is the front and the rear. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that out of the car and then replace it with the aftermarket wheelwood proportion valve that is adjustable by hitting this in and out. I also have here three different adapters or three of the same adapters that is uh, female to female so I can delete the stock proportion valve completely. Alright guys now that the stock proportion valve is out I can go ahead and start marking up 
the aftermarket piece. So on a stock 240Z or 260, 280 for that matter, what you have is a inverted flare, like what you can see here if it zooms in correctly. This is used in the entire vehicle because the whole car is based on metric system. However, we would use this all standard unit fittings. I didn't realize at the time because this wheelwood fitting is M10 by one thread. So I automatically assume it was a metric, but that's where I went wrong. What you need to do is get a adapter like this, which has inverted flare on one side and a bubble flare on the other side. Silver My Motors was smart enough to include this both on the inlet side as well as on the outlet side of the car. So if you can see, that is the inverted and that is the bubble. So I'm gonna have inverted coming out of the car using a double female adapter like this, right? So it's gonna come out of the car like so. And then I'm gonna mount the wheelwood prop valve on the bubble flare and then exit out with the bubble flare ending at inverted. So that's what I'm gonna have to do now. As for mounting the prop valve into the car, I decided to mount it on the master cylinder for clean install. So I created this nice little piece of bracket that will be mounted right here so that the prop valve can be here. All right guys, I am now back in office and here's where the fun starts. This is just some of the tools I like to use when cutting up brake line and recreating the flares necessary for your applications. Here I have the wire bender or brake line bender. It's got groove for different size brake lines. You can bend it at 45, 90 or 180 degrees. Of course you can bend this by your hand because it's very flexible. But using a tool like this, it gives your project a very much cleaner look. This tool is like 20 bucks. Now this tool here is uh, very expensive. It's about $300. What I realized is that having a proper brake flaring tool like this will pay off itself real fast. At the end of the day, I am a huge fan of hover freight tools and saving money. But when it comes to stuff like this, when it comes to safety, I am not going to cheap out on it. I want to make sure I do the flaring job correctly, properly with the right tool like this. So let me show you how this works. So what you got over here is a pipe cutter. What this does is, it's it's pretty neat. If you have walked on the house and cut like a copper line, water line, it's the same thing. It essentially has a rotor cutter in the middle, which gets compressed by spinning this thing around the pipe. And you do a 360 spin once. It creates an indent. And once you do a 360, you just go tighter, 360, tighter, 360, and tighter and tighter. And eventually it will cut off. I will show you how that works later. And then this is the flare tool. It will come with all types of fittings, sizes, shapes that you can use for your application. Here I got the bubble flare adapter. What you do is feed the wire in here in this guy, pop that in here, and then squeeze the handle and it will give you the flare. One pro tip here when you're cutting up and bending a brake line like this, is that especially if you have long distance to do grab a wire hanger and put that in the car and kind of adjust bend and cut accordingly after you have the wire hanger to your liking you want to match the brake line to the wire hanger and use that uh, as a guideline
Alright guys, now we're back in the garage, I installed new lines, let me show you how sexy this looks. Who said I couldn't build show cars? This looks so good, I'm very happy with the results, so let me just show you what happened here. Front one is the reservoir for the rear brake, so pressure builds up here, hoops around, comes into the pop valve, which is fully open right now, and that gets connected to the female-female adapter and that line goes to the back of the car. Firewall side, this is the front brake. Brake pressure builds up in here, comes down along this line. This side goes to the driver's side, and this side goes to the passenger side. Again, uh, I deleted the stock prop valve, right? So that's why I have the female-female uh, inverted flare adapter there. And that is how prop valve is installed. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and bleed the brakes front and back. The basic guideline for bleeding brakes and the breathing order is that you wanna start from as far away from the booster as possible. So in my case, because it's a left-hand drive car, I'm gonna bleed out the rear passenger side, moving on to the rear driver side, and then front passenger side, and then the front driver side. And I'm just gonna bleed that out. Uh, and uh, I might take the car out for a spin actually. I'm gonna be rubbing like crazy in the back here with the new tires. Um, but I'm just gonna take it around the block and see if the car actually even uh, stops. I'm gonna go with uh, the valve line brake fluid. It's not a race car. I don't need to get anything extreme like this Moto 600, which is the brake fluid I run on my uh, FTR X7 and the Evo as well. But because this is a street driven DD kind of car, this should be just fine. All right, so let's take it for a spin. You wanna go for a ride, baby? Come on, let's go. It starts though, good sign. Check out this new wood and engraved shift knob too. Uh, it's got the C0 engraved, custom made by guys from Phoenix shift knobs. Awesome guys, thanks for the custom work. Looks beautiful and matches the NRG steering wheel with the Datsun horn on front end. All right, here we go. You ready, baby? Oh Jesus. You guys hear that pop? I feel like the gas in here might be a little old because it's been sitting all winter and it tend to do that, that popping noise. <laughs> Love it. But so far, the car is feeling good. I don't feel any excessive rubbing, which is good. Okay, so just by riding around town real quick, I have gone like two miles. I can notice that the rear tire is definitely rubbing. I can smell the rubber, so I'm not gonna go too far. But uh, I'm just gonna take a turn real quick to see if the fronts are running also. All right, so let's check this out. I didn't hear the front rubbing and looks like it is not rubbing. So that's good. And then the rear, I know what's for fact rubbing. Yep, you can see that there is a slight rub. It's not too bad though, but the fact that the rug is like an inch and a half into the car tells you that this is poking out significantly. Alright, so that's that. The tires are rubbing in the back a little bit, not bad on the front. I'm gonna go ahead and play with brake bias, but not too much because I'm rubbing. So I'm gonna go ahead, take the car back home, and uh, get started on the ZZ Flare installation. 